Hi guys, welcome back to Portal of Wisdom. I'm back today with another video. If you are new to the channel, like and subscribe and click that post notification bell so you can get alerted when I post new videos. And now on to today's topic. Today's topic is about the Lost Adams diggings. This is a story about a lost canyon of gold that is in the kind of the Arizona, New Mexico border area. No one knows exactly where it's at, and the story was told by Adams, a man by the last name of Adams. Um, he was always called Adams. No one can seem to determine exactly what his first name is. But the, the story goes like this. Adams was born July 10th, 1829 in Rochester, New York. He moved out west to Los Angeles and started a freighting business in 1861. He freighted goods between L.A. and Tucson. It was the most lucrative job and business was growing. He had just left Tucson, the, the Tucson area, and settled down for camp for the night. The Apaches took off with a herd of horses and he chased them down. He managed to get his herd back fairly easily. He felt funny about this. The Indians never give up horses this easily. When he got back to camp, he found out why. The Apaches had set fire and burned his wagon, supplies, and all of his money. All he had left was his 12 horses. He headed toward the town of Pima. He figured on trading a couple of horses for some supplies to get back to Los Angeles. There he met numerous prospectors and a half Mexican, half Apache with the name Gotchir. He was named this because he had a badly misshapen ear. He was told... He told how his brother and him had been kidnapped uh, from Mexico and raised by the Apaches. The Apaches came to trust him as their own. They had showed him the location of a canyon filled with gold. But he was on the run now. He had killed an Apache that killed his brother in a fight. He now feared they would kill him. Gotchir said that he would show the men where the canyon was in exchange for two horses, a gun, ammunition, and some money to make his escape to Mexico. Adams had horses, but no money for supplies. The other prospectors said they, were, they would pay for the supplies if Adams would provide his horses. They agreed, and 12 or 22 men, depending on the story, set off, including Adams and Gotchir, the number of men Kind of depends on, on the source, but there was at least a dozen men. Gotchir said that it would take several days to get there. The date was August 20th, 1864. From the Pima village northwest of Tucson, they headed north, um, kind of northeast, up the Gila River. They followed it to its confluence with the uh, San Carlos River. Then they headed north. They followed the river until it turned east. They continued north into a heavily timbered mountain area at this point. After four days of travel through the heavy timber, they came to a very tall mountain, possibly Baldy Peak. Adams claimed they crossed two large streams since leaving the Gila River. From here they followed one of the rivers to its east fork into the White Mountains for two days. This put them in the area of Mount Baldy, where the headwaters of the stream were said to be. From a mountain lookout here, they could see many mountain ranges. Gotchir pointed to two closely nestled mountain peaks and said the gold-filled canyon is close to those mountains. Adams thought those mountains looked to be at least 100 miles away in a northeast direction. Gotchir then followed some old Indian trail northeast. They finally came to a wagon trail. Gotchir said, to remember it as it leads to the old fort in the in the Malpias rocks. It was probably Old Fort Wingate near present-day Grants, New Mexico. No one knows which direction the fort was when they crossed the wagon trail. They camped in a box canyon on a high mesa with abandoned irrigation ditches and many vines. Adams called the place Pumpkin Patch. The next morning they set off up the canyon further. Around midday, they came to a reddish-colored solid rock wall 60 or 70 feet tall. 
Behind a huge boulder at the base of the wall was a hidden portal, almost unnoticeable. It led to a very rough trail in a zigzag canyon that made a perfect Z. This canyon had walls so close in places that men could reach out and touch both walls. The canyon finally opened up, and there was some timber and large boulders down there. They continued on upstream to the other end of the canyon. They climbed up a steep trail onto the mesa. From there, Gautier pointed out to the two mountain peaks. They had seen from uh, they had seen those peaks a few days earlier while in the White Mountains. It appeared that they were just a few hours away. They were led down into a canyon with a stream on the canyon floor. Here they camped for the night. The men started panning for gold here. They found many gold nuggets everywhere they panned. Gautier said that this was not the place he was taking them. He said there was more gold a, a little ways away. The men didn't want to leave. So they paid Gautier and he left. He told them not to stay long because it was a campsite of the Apaches. The men continued to pan for gold and cut timber and build a cabin. Legend says Gautier was killed by the Apaches shortly after leaving the canyon. It is said that Chief Nana and 20 of his warriors showed up. The Apaches thought the gold were the tears from the sun and the essence of life. But today, Chief Nana decided to tell the miners not to touch any gold above the rim. Any miner found above the rim would be killed. One morning, a horse got loose up onto the mesa. A miner retrieved him from the rim and found a gold nugget the size of an egg. The big nugget was put under a rock next to a tree stump. To Adam's dismay, many of the other miners started wandering above the rim in search of gold. Most of the gold was put into a coffee can beneath a flagstone by the fireplace. The miners are said to have amassed 300 pounds of gold. Their supplies started to run out, so Adam sent John Brewer and some men to find the fort that Gotch Ear had pointed out to get supplies. They didn't know how far the fort was, but figured on an eight-day round trip. After eight days, Brewer had not returned. Adams and Jack Davidson rode back to the rough canyon to look for them. At the secret entrance of the canyon, they found dead men, dead horses, and flowers scattered everywhere. They carefully buried the men in a, in a crevice and covered them with rocks. They headed toward camp. When they were about a mile away, they heard gunfire. They climbed up to the rim to a good vantage point and saw their friends' bodies. They knew the Apaches were, would come for them, so they unsaddled their horses and turned them loose. They hid in a thicket until the sun went down. After dark, they snuck into camp to get the gold. The cabin was on fire. It had collapsed over the fireplace, and they could not get the gold. The only gold they could get was the, the egg-shaped nugget. They made their escape with dawn rapidly approaching. They wandered in the desert for 13 days before finally they came to a fort. They were dehydrated, malnourished, sunburnt, blistered, and exhausted, and their clothes barely hang, hung on them. Shortly after arriving, Davidson died. Adams told the doctor about their adventure and showed him the large gold nugget. A couple days later, five peaceful Apaches came to the fort. Adams was still confused and delirious from his travels. Though he recognized them as being from Chief Nana's warriors, he picked up a rifle and killed two of them. While he waited for his murder trial, he made his escape to Los Angeles. Many people have searched for the Zigzag Canyon and the gold-laden stream, but none have ever been able to find it again. This area is littered with many mountains and canyons, many of which could fit that description. So if you like stories like this, like and subscribe. That is the story of Adam's Lost Gold Diggings.